Hi guys, my name is Steph, this is The Novelty Corner and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here to talk about some of my favourite heroines in romance books. So I have eight characters on this list, they are by no means my only favourite heroines in romance books but they're the eight that I could think of when I was writing down my notes for this video. So we're gonna jump straight in and I have three favourite heroines from the same author writing duo because they just write some truly fantastic heroines and that is Alona Andrews. And I will say that there are very few characters in Alona Andrews that I do not love with all of my heart and soul. So narrowing this down to sort of only three from them was was tough. So don't think this is me not loving any of the other characters because I totally do. We're gonna start off top tier with Kate Daniels from the Kate Daniels series who is just the best. She is a woman who was born to parents with incredible power and she has spent most of her life on the run trying to contain her own abilities so that people don't know who she is. Throughout the series she works as a mercenary, she has worked for the Order of Knights of Merciful Aid, she has been a private investigator, she has been the consort, she has been a mother, and she is just this incredible character with incredible power who also just wants to stand up for people who can't stand up for themselves. I absolutely love her. I love the fact that they've decided to continue writing stories about Kate and her family with Curran and with Conlon and just seeing how she has grown through her relationship with Curran as well. I can't say enough things about Kate Daniels because she is just top tier up there hands down no questions. I also really love Catalina from the Hidden Legacy series and that's not to say that I don't love Nevada as well but Catalina I think I related to a little bit more just in terms of her personality. She is also someone who has an ability that she tries to keep hidden because it is quite a confronting ability that would terrify most people in that she is essentially a siren. She can make people do whatever she wants but it comes at a cost and she doesn't like abusing her power and she has stepped up basically to run the family's investigative business when Nevada moves out and she takes on a lot of responsibility, but her family is about to become very well known for their magical ability. And it's a scary time for her and suddenly she is the head of the house and she has to take on the responsibility for everyone. And the way that she does that is with Grace, she is incredibly intelligent. And just reading about her working through the problems that she faces is really fascinating. Her relationship with Alessandro is antagonistic at first and then just really wonderful and I love the way that he respects her so much and the way that everyone in her family respects her and the way that she really keeps this group together. I love reading her stories so much. like I would probably go back and reread Catalina's stories before I read Nevada's just because I really love her character so much. And then we have Maud from Sweep of Blade which is a sort of sidestep in the Innkeeper Chronicles world because Maud is a side character in one book and then she gets her own standalone book. She is the sister of Dina who is the main female protagonist in the Innkeeper Chronicles series and Maud is the older sister. She has spent a lot of time off of Earth. She was married to a vampire. She's had a child with him and then she and her husband and her, and her child were exiled and she had to survive and she and her daughter Helen are just fantastic. Maud is incredibly tough, she doesn't let anyone run over her and she ends up falling for Arland who is a very prominent vampire and she's decided she's not having anything to do with vampire society again except she has to because her daughter is part vampire. And in this book they are returning to Arland's homeworld and there he is trying to woo her, he's head over heels in love with her and Maud is in love with him but also very unsure of whether or not she can trust this vampire family and she has to prove her way through the whole way through the book and she is just totally kick-ass and amazing. And she and Arland are the perfect match because they give as good as they get in everything that they do. Again, she's another very incredibly intelligent, very smart, very savvy character. And I love a strong heroine like that. Okay, and then we have Ryan from Blind Pass by Tegan Hunter. I absolutely loved Ryan because we met her in the first book she was the best friend and she's an artist. She's a photographer and she is just this very cool side character in this first book and then when she gets her story it's really interesting because it's a, a wake up married story and she and Rhodes have to sort of fake their relationship because the publicity would be terrible if they said it was an accident. She totally breaks through Rhodes' grumpy exterior 
and the some of the scenes that they have together are just incredible and a lot of that is facilitated through Ryan really highlighting that she recognizes Rose for more than his hockey ability, more from the scar that's on his face, more than what other people would externally judge him by. And so while she's not as big and as flashy as some of the other the characters say in the Kate Daniels world, she is just this very strong, quiet presence in this book. And the whole way through their sort of ups and downs, they just, they make it work. And I appreciate that in a character. In a similar fashion, we have Rooney from With You Forever. Rooney has a chronic illness in this book and she's had a flare up and she's trying to escape for a little while, escape her life and just sort of find her centre and, and find herself again. And she ends up with an offer to go and stay at the Bergman family's cottage. But when she gets there, she finds that it's under construction. And Axel, who is autistic and very grumpy, has been fixing up the cabin without his family knowing. And the two end up staying at Axel's cabin and spending time getting to know one another. Axel needs to get married in order to get an inheritance, which he needs the money to continue to fix up the A-frame cabin. And Rooney agrees to do it. She's just like, well, you know what? You know, we're friends. Why not? Let's do it. And their relationship develops from there. And Rudy, again, is a really quiet presence. Again, very intelligent, but very sort of solid and stable and dealing with her own things. And also willing to be vulnerable with Axel and recognising sort of a kindred spirit in him in that people don't always get to see what's behind their exterior, the thing that they put up the front they put up for other people and you know just seeing them grow and seeing Rooney grow in the story as well because she's always been the fun friend from previous books and in this one seeing she's actually got a lot more going on and a lot more that we don't know about as readers like it was just wonderful. We'll keep going with contemporary and there is Rachel from Pucking Around who is this very vibrant very active character and I think the thing that I like most about her in this book is how sex positive she is this is a Why Choose Polyamorous story. And sometimes in polyamorous stories, you have characters, usually the heroine in the story, really having to grapple with what that means. And in this case, Rachel doesn't. She knows that she's attracted to all three men in the story. She is unapologetic about it. She knows what she wants. And even when she does have her moment of doubt, sort of as part of the third act sort of stuff in this book, it's not because she doesn't want to be with them. She actually just very honestly says, I need to take a moment to stop and think about this and the implications of what this is going to do for all of us. And, you know, takes that step back. It's not about breaking up and it's not about ending things. It's about going, hang on, we, we need to get some perspective here and I can't get perspective in this moment. And we don't often get characters who make that choice in books. Often authors will go for the third act breakup or they won't go for any conflict. And in this one, it really felt like Rachel was working through what she needed to do in order to feel comfortable moving forward. And the boys do have a great grand gesture and she is just blown away by it. But the whole thing was awesome. And I loved getting to know Rachel as a character because she knows what she wants. It's never a question about that. She's very, very confident. And that's always attractive in a character when you're reading about because you go, okay, I know what I'm going to get from this character. Like there's not going to be any surprises thrown in here. I also really love Silver from Silver Silence. She is a psi. She is the right hand woman for the most powerful slash dangerous man that exists essentially. And she stands toe to toe with him and she works side by side with him and is never intimidated by him because they've built trust despite the fact they're living in a silent society. She herself has aspects to her abilities that she really can't reveal because it's not okay under silence. But her relationship with Valentin and the bears is hilarious because he is so playful and joyful and he loves pushing her buttons and quite often she gives as good as she gets and their like their banter is playful and funny and watching as she begins to realize that she can still have what she has and have more at the same time was great. And also the other thing that we know about Silver is she's extremely family oriented. She is incredibly close with her family and the Mercants. Like they don't display it the same way that they would normally because they know they are under scrutiny, under silence, but their entire family group is very tight knit and Silver is very, very dedicated to them, which is nice. I love seeing that in a character. And then finally, you guys have heard me talk about this book recently. It is Maggie from Role Playing, who is totally my goal for when I'm in my, you know, 40s and 50s. She's a tough, no-nonsense boss of a woman who gives as good as she gets in any situation, who stands up for people who need support. She is unapologetically a gamer. She is unapologetically a homebody and she just loves her people with all her heart. I love her so much. The scene where she stands up to Aiden's family who are being blatantly and 
unapologetically biphobic and she just wants to smack down with all of them. If I didn't already love her by that point, I would have just fallen head over heels for her. She is easily my newest favorite heroine that I have read this year. I love her so much. <laughs> all right, so those are eight of my favorite heroines. In the comments, I would love to know do you have a favorite heroine from a romance book? Feel free to share who it is and which book they're from down below. I hope that wherever you are in the world, you're staying safe and healthy and I will see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye everyone.